Hello, welcome to my latest video. This time it's a painting of a red squirrel again. This red squirrel, I managed to get the reference photo on a visit to the British Wildlife Centre in south of England. Because around this area, there are no red squirrels in the wild, unfortunately. But there's quite a few at the centre who are friendly enough and will get close. This reference photograph was taken with just a mobile phone. It was that close to me. So, I've decided to do the airbrushing and scratching out coloured pencil method I've done many times before. And I've used some frisk to mask out the squirrel and the branches and trees, as you can see. Just so I can do this blurry black gound with a, an airbrush. The actual photo, you can see the background quite clearly, but I thought it far too distracting. After I, I've done that, I go, as you can see, I'm going round the squirrel with a scalpel to scratch away that blurry black ground and then putting in all the trees and branches. I'm going to leave those quite simply done. I'm not going to go into too fine a detail as I want the focus on the squirrel, which it should be anyway as it's bright orange. The paints I'm using are acrylic, Creatix illustration colours. I'm using those because they go through the airbrush beautifully. I believe they are actually made for airbrushing. While I'm doing these branches, I am trying to uh, paint it as fast as possible, but include all the detail. So the speed will stop me from fiddling too much and making it the main focus of the painting. It is quite uh, fun to paint like this, nice and fast and loose. You can really notice in the time lapse how the colour changes from wet to dry. So what looks like something that's far too bright massively dulls down after 30 seconds or so. And with this time lapse you can really see it fast. It does make it slightly annoying when you're trying to work out what colour you want. So I often, uh, I'll paint the area, it dries to the wrong colour, so I go over it again. Quick use of the airbrush there to tie things together. And then paint over the airbrush in so it doesn't look like it's airbrushed. Always tricky at this stage to uh, work out when you've done enough. Right. Now comes the stage where I've decided I have done enough and I'm establishing or re establishing the, where the fur goes over those branches. Now I'm onto the squirrel proper. The technique here is to spray some colour. You don't have to be that careful with it. Then using the scalpel, scratch into the clay board all the lines of hairs. Once you've uh, gone over the whole squirrel, it's back in with the, the airbrush and do it all again. So what was a pure white hair because of the scratching through all the paint turns into the colour you airbrush next, pushing those hairs further back. So when you come round to do it again, you don't do it over all the area. Airbrush it again so those first scratches get even darker still. Trickiest thing here with the scratching of the with the scalpel is some of the curves are, are going against the natural arc of your hand 
If I wasn't filming it, I would be turning the board around to put it in a more favourable position. But that would muck up the uh, the video a bit. So I'm learning to scratch curves against my hand. Now on this uh, second major scratching round, I'm uh, keeping a check on the reference photo to see how the clumps of hairs go. Because when you look at an animal's fur, the hairs don't just end up in an even distribution. They always clump together into little points, little triangles of hair. And uh, the tips of those hairs also tend to catch the light as I'm doing on the squirrel's neck here. With this technique, the, uh, the hairs only work if they're lighter than the background. Fortunately, that's normally the case as what's the background of the hair is deeper into the animal and it will be under shadow. But once I've done with most of this scratching, and, the, and the will, there will be some hairs that are darker than the surrounding area. Then I'll move on to coloured pencils to put those in. I'll um, put in the description the uh, various makes of pencils and things I've been using. So here we go, I'm onto the pencil for the dark hairs. Plus I was using the white there to, uh, I noticed uh, there's a sort of strange pink shine to some of the squirrel's hair. And going over the area, the orange area with the white pencil gave me that pinkish colour. So uh, I'm very much at the stage now where it's uh, just look at the reference photograph, look at your painting, flick your eyes between the two and see what jumps out as different. The little subtle areas. When you get close into the, the painting, you, you can often not see the, that. So flicking your eyes between the two does make the errors jump out. Plus with this squirrel, I did the final touch up on the next day so I could uh, sleep and then come back fresh to, to see what's different. So signature on, that means finished. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and be great to see you on the next video. Thank you. Bye.